yummy, Chef. Ooh, goodness, that aroma is fantastic. Hey everybody, I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to The Very Vera Show. You know, fall is in the air and it's time to start talking in Augusta, Georgia about the best of. And so I thought today would be fun to give you some tips and ideas about some of the best things that we did in our mail order business and in our cafe and the things that I sold in Costco. So we're going to start today with our carrot cake. It beat Bobby Flay on Throwdown, it became one of the most popular cakes that we sold and it is great this time of year. And then we're going to do the chicken and wild rice casserole that was sold in Costco and all of their Southeast Division stores. And then finally, the strawberry cake that after 10 years made it on Oprah's list. I was so excited. And we're also going to be partnering today with the Convention and Visitors Bureau here and the Augusta Magazine. We're going to tell you a little bit more about this hometown on a vine and I'm going to take you to three of my favorite places right here in the area. The Hyatt House, the Larder in Hammonds Ferry, and then the Morris Museum of Art. So we've got a lot to do today, lots of stories to tell, so let's get in the kitchen and get started on that carrot cake. All right, so it was the summer of 2010 and I got a call from what was then the new cooking channel. That's what I thought. They wanted to know if I would do a show called Top That Cake, and of course I said yes. What I didn't realize when Bobby Flay walked in the room and I was live in front of an audience that I was on Throwdown with Bobby Flay. And you know, honestly, you do not know he's coming, and my reaction to that was probably their video for their commercial for over a year. So this is an award-winning cake, beating Bobby Flay with it, and it's just one of those cakes that just blew off off the map when it went on the air. Everybody wanted a carrot cake. So it became one of the most popular cakes. It's one of the most popular ones in our cookbook. And I love the picture in the cookbook with the fairy garden. So I've done a little bit ahead to get us going on this recipe. So we started with combining the sugar and oil in a large mixing bowl. And you don't have to use a mixer to do this recipe. And I just mixed that up with the spatula. Then I added my eggs one at a time and get those combined really well after each addition. Then you combine the buttermilk and vanilla so that it's mixed really well together. And then you're going to mix your cake flour, baking soda, salt, cinnamon, and nutmeg. Don't you love these ingredients? And then you will add your dry ingredients with your buttermilk beginning and ending with flour into the mixture and just get it blended really well. All right, so that's what I've done right here and it's ready to put all of the other ingredients in it. So on the carrots, you peel them and you grate them by hand. And that's one of the reasons that the flavor goes through because you really, really opens up that carrot and you get that flavor. And then you're going to squeeze your canned crushed pineapple and get most of the juice out. And then on the pecans, I actually love to chop those by hand. Just really just take my hands and just get those mixed together. And then coconut. So this is a scrumptious spice cake. And the fact that you don't have to use a mixer, this would be a great cake if you have a young person that you want to introduce the baking skills to. They can learn about mixing, they can learn about folding, they can learn about getting all of the ingredients measured in advance. It's one of my favorite ones to make with my grandchildren. Okay, once you've got everything incorporated, I've prepared my nine inch cake pans with a piece of parchment paper in the bottom, but you can also use wax paper if you don't have parchment. Just lay the cake pan down and cut your circle. All right, so we're gonna divide this batter evenly between the three pans. And I've probably done this so many times now that I know, I know what the, it's supposed to look like, but you're just getting an even distribution. And I also sprayed the pans really well with my Baker's Joy. My oven is preheated to 325. And if you use the convection feature, then you can put all, you can use all the different racks in the oven. If you don't have a convection, then you're gonna want to make sure that you get all three pans on the same rack or you rotate them halfway through. 
All right, so you know I've lived in Augusta for over 36 years now and I've just enjoyed so much watching our town grow. And so many of you are so interested in my hometown. So I want to introduce you to one of my favorite destinations, somewhere I recommend if anybody's coming in from out of town to stay, and that's the Hyatt House. It's located downtown on Broad Street. You know, there are 10 golf courses in the area, so it's just a great place to stay and enjoy golf on your own at some of these golf courses. There's a beautiful terrace on the roof. They have a bar. They have a complimentary breakfast every morning, so it's just really great. It's within walking distance of churches and restaurants, so I hope Hope you'll check out the Hyatt House if you're headed this way. So come back with me after the break. I'm going to get these in the oven and we'll get started on that chicken and wild rice casserole. Welcome back everybody and if you're just joining me today we are celebrating the best of Vera because we're celebrating the best of Augusta with the Augusta Convention and Visitors Bureau and Augusta Magazine, my hometown. So I'm so happy to share all of that with you. But This is another one of our best. The chicken and wild rice casserole was sold in all of the Southeastern Division Costco stores. But let me tell you something, it's not easy to get in there. And we used to have to travel to do the road shows and wear the white hair nets and pass out samples. As a matter of fact, at the time, our local news anchor, Barclay Bishop, was part of the Very Very team. And she actually participated in some of that with us. So those are some fond memories. So we've done a little bit to get ready for this chicken and wild rice casserole. It was one of the best sellers in our company. But we started by getting getting the chicken ready, that's three large chicken breasts. I had water and chicken broth and a little bit of salt that I brought to a boil, added the chicken, and then you just put the lid on it, let it cook for 10 minutes. And then I love a casserole that you can really tell what the meat is. So make the chunks hearty so that you can really tell that the main ingredient is the chicken. All right, then the wild rice. So I love to use Uncle Ben's uh, wild rice. And one of the things in the recipe that'll tell you clearly is that you want to throw away the seasoning packet. You know, you might want to use it to season some broth for another recipe, but you don't need it in this recipe. So I've cooked it until it's nice and fluffy, and I I'm now ready to mix all of these ingredients together. So let's add the chicken into the rice. All right, then there's some crunch in this, which also makes this very appealing. We've got chopped up celery, water chestnuts, and you know, you can leave those off if you don't like them, but honestly, they really provide not only great flavor, but that nice chunk crunch when you bite into this casserole. And then of course, your green peas. So you're gonna get all of the ingredients that you need there. So now let's get started on the sauce that goes with it. I really want you to use Hellman's mayonnaise in this recipe, and I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to that because it doesn't have as much oil in it as some other mayonnaise do, and you don't want a bunch of oil in this when it cooks. So that was um, garlic salt, onion salt. Now I'm gonna add lemon juice, Worcestershire sauce, Dijon mustard, just a little bit of that. And then as always, I've hand grated my cheddar cheese. And we're gonna put some freshly cracked black pepper in as well. So let me give that a little stir. And then I've prepared my nine by 11 or 12 inch pan um, with cooking spray. And you don't need a lot, but it just helps with the cleanup. Now I'm gonna add this sauce back in to the chicken and rice. And you know, this is such a great gift item if you need to take something to a friend. It also freezes beautifully. And if you freeze it, when you get ready to actually use it, I want you to bake it from the frozen state. Okay, so I've got my oven on 350 degrees. And, you know, when we start thinking more about, 
you know, what makes Augusta a great place to visit? Because, you know, so many of you are watching from all over the place. And I just love to point out the things other than golf that you can do when you're in the city of Augusta. So one of my other favorite places is actually right across the river in North Augusta, and it's called The Larder. It is a great restaurant. It's chef owned. They have small plates. They do dinner entrees. They do custom cocktails. They locally source everything that they do. And they also have live entertainment on Wednesday night. It's a really quaint neighborhood, so I really want you to visit that when you're in Augusta. So in Vera's Corner today, I'm gonna give you a little bit of tips on how to carve that pumpkin with Halloween coming up really soon. And then we're gonna get started on the now famous strawberry layer cake. So please come back with me in just a few minutes. I'll get this popped in the oven. Vera's Corner is sponsored by Tax Slayer. It's your refund, go get it. Carving pumpkins is a great experience for adults and children. Today I'm gonna to give you some tips on how you can make your pumpkin spectacular. When shopping for your pumpkin, buy a pumpkin with a green stem if you can. This indicates the pumpkin is fresher and has been handled less than others. To maintain the structural integrity of the pumpkin, don't cut the hole in the top or bottom, cut it in the back. Note, only do this if you're using artificial light inside, not a candle. Scrape out as much of the stringy bits inside as you can, and then cover the entire inside with petroleum jelly. This will help keep the pumpkin fresher longer. Don't get rid of the seeds. Pumpkin seeds are perfect. They are a great, crunchy fall snack. Have an idea of the design you'd like to create before you get started? If you are freehanding your design, use a dry erase marker so you can make edits until your design is right. If you'd rather not freehand, use cookie cutters for easy designs. Use a rubber mallet to push the cookie cutter into the wall of the pumpkin. When you're finished, cover the cut sections with the petroleum jelly. Place your artificial light inside and enjoy. Welcome back, and I hope you enjoyed those tips on carving pumpkins. It's just fun to do, and I hope you'll enjoy those ideas. All right, so another famous cake in our repertoire is my grandmother's recipe from the 1940s. And you know, this time of year, she actually made this quite a bit. And you know, the neat thing about it is I thought this was her recipe. I thought I was the only person that had it, and she was the only grandmother that made it. Well, as I did my research, as we were preparing to write the cookbook, I found out that everybody was making this cake in the 40s, that actually Jell-O had a lot to do with the recipe in the first place. So it does use Jell-O gelatin in the recipe, which makes it really unique. It also uses cake mix in here. So it's just a very unusual recipe, but really, to me, reminds me so much of my grandmother and my childhood. And so many of you may know that my mother passed away when I was 31. Uh, she was 65, about to be 66, of cancer. And over the years of my mail order business, in the month of May for Mother's Day, we always donated $2 for every sale of this cake to the American Cancer Society. We raised quite a bit of money over time you know, for that cause, and I'm very, very proud of that. Another thing that makes me very proud is the fact that I sent this cake to Oprah Winfrey, y'all, for 10 years, and they always sent a really sweet card. In fact, she signed several of them, but on the 10th time I sent her one, she said, we're going to write, write about you in our May issue. So it was perfect because it was around that time when I give the money to the American Cancer Society. And it just goes to show you that you can just be persistent and sometimes things pay off. Other magazines featured this as well. So I'm really proud of it. All right, so let's talk about what we did in advance and how we got to this stage. So as I said, this starts with thawed strawberries that I'm gonna put into a food processor. So you buy the frozen strawberries and just pulse them to puree. You're gonna measure a half a cup of that and then put the rest into a container with a lid to use for later when you want to make this recipe again. 
Then you're gonna combine the cake mix and the Jello mix. And on the cake mix, you're gonna buy two boxes of the Betty Crocker cake mix, but you're not gonna use all of the second box. Four cups is what you need, so you'll have again, put that in the Ziploc bag for when you get ready to make this recipe again. Then add the strawberry puree, the eggs, the oil, and the mix, and then add the milk and beat that together, you know, for about two, two minutes or so. So now I'm gonna add just a little bit more just regular flour to this recipe. And I've prepared my pans again with my Baker's Joy and my parchment circles. And you're gonna divide this among your three pans. So just remember, you wanna work quickly when you do this because the minute those cold ingredients come together and the wet ingredients, that jello starts turning into jello. All right, so let's move, get these into the pans. And I've got my oven preheated to 325, and these are gonna bake for about 25 to 30 minutes. So this batter actually rises quite a bit when it bakes. All right, then after that, once these come out of the oven, you wanna cool them and you know, just the aroma, y'all, when you're baking these layers is incredible. It's a beautiful color as well. All right, so let me get that last little bit out of here. This is when licking the bowl was probably my favorite part as well. Okay, now here the preheat is ready on that oven. All right, so these are ready to go. All right, so let me talk to you a little bit about the icing for these cakes. So the icing was really easy to do too. So this is cream the butter and the cream cheese. You're gonna add strawberry extract. Then you're gonna slowly add your confectioner's sugar, scrape the sides, and then you wanna use six drops of the red food coloring to get this perfect pink color for the icing. All right, so let me tell you about another one of my favorite places in Augusta, and that's the Morris Museum of Art. It's dedicated to the art of the American South. There are more than 5,000 works in that building, and honestly, for me, being from here, I can go there once a year and see something that I've never seen before. It is completely incredible. They have special programs and tours all the time. All right, so when we come back from the break, we're gonna get all of this put together. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the giveaway that we've got for today. So we'll see you back with the beautiful best of presentation. Welcome back, everybody, and we have presented the best of the best of the years of Berry Vera. I hope you've enjoyed today. I know I have. And all of the recipes that are on today's show are on BerryVera.com, along with many recipes that we've made over these nine years of doing the show. So I hope you'll check that out. But let's walk back through what we did today, because it's been quite a lot of fun. We started with the carrot cake, beat Bobby Flay with that cake. His had marshmallow icing and ginger in the recipe. As much as I love Bobby Flay, I do think this was better, and so did the judges. So it just turned out beautifully. We iced it, we did a crumb coat with it that covers up everything. And one of the things I always love to suggest is to have a little bowl beside you where you can put the icing that does get some of the crumbs on it when you're doing the crumb coat. And then the finishing is the kitty swirl that I've talked about before, reminiscent of the days in our mail order company. It was the signature way that we iced every cake. And it just slices beautifully and will last for about a week in the refrigerator or in the freezer for six months. All right, then we did the chicken and wild rice casserole, and it just plates beautifully. Honestly, that and a salad, it's a meal in one. You can see that there's no grease in this casserole dish, just like I was suggesting. Any little bit of oil that's there is really part of your cheddar cheese. So I certainly recommend that as a go-to for if you need to take something to somebody, but it just worked out beautifully. And I'm using all of my beautiful silver and crystal today to really make this best of the best. And then finally, the strawberry layer cake. Just look at how it's iced. And again, you wanna make sure that you put enough icing in between the layers when you're icing it so that it showcases itself when you slice it. And then 
to a cake this size, you can get about 20 slices out of that cake. It slices beautifully. That with some fresh strawberries really turns out great. And the flower design on the top was also part of our signature. All right, so we have a very special giveaway today. You know, everybody loved the one that we did last time. So it's back again, come to Augusta. So come see us, come see Augusta is the new slogan here. And we hope that our relationship with the Augusta Convention and Visitors Bureau and also Augusta Magazine will highlight what you can do with this giveaway. So we want you to go to all of our social media handles and also visit Augusta.com slash Very Vera Weekend to learn more about the giveaway. All right, so the giveaway includes two nights at the Hyatt House, dinner for two at Larder at Hammonds Ferry, two tickets to get into the Mars Museum of Art, two tickets to the Miller Theater for whatever is going on when you decide to make the trip, two tickets to the James Brown Family Foundation Tour, and four other gift cards to make use of when you're in the area. So I hope you'll come back and join me next week. My special guest is Kelsey Burak. She's the latest champion of the Food Network's Chopped Sweets. So please tune in next week. Have a great week.